Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we'll be going over how to solve a complex related rates problem. So let's break this question up. A tube is being stretched while maintaining its cylindrical shape. That tells us that any sort of formula we use today has to be of a cylinder. The height is increasing at the rate of two millimeters per second. That gives us our DHCT value, which is the derivative of the height in relation to time. And a key reason of how we know it's in relation to time is because it says millimeters per second. So that equals two. At the instant that the radius of the tube is six millimeters, the volume is increasing at the rate of 96 pi cubic millimeters per second. So the first thing it tells us is that the radius of the tube is six millimeters. So R is equal to six. Right. And then second, the volume is increasing at the rate of 96 pi cubic millimeters per second. So it is telling us a rate based, so it's telling us a rate based on time, which is the per second part. So that gives us our derivative of the volume in relation to time, which is 96 pi right here. Now it's now the first step is to look at the volume. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So since we're given the dvdt value or the derivative of the volume in relation to time, we should probably plug that into the equation. So first, in order for us to get our dvdt value or set any value in with it, we have to take the derivative of the volume formula. So let's do that here. Square or dt plus 2r dr dt h. So the first theory to look at is how we didn't take the derivative of pi. A key reason for this is pi is a constant. It's already a given number. So in that case, we don't have to take the derivative of it. Rather, we just multiply it at the end once we take the der derivative of radius squared h. So in this case, the derivative of radius squared h is radius squared dh over dt, which is the derivative of the height in relation to time plus 2r dr dt h. So two times the radius times the derivative of the radius in relation to time times h, which is the height. So now first let's solve the inside before multiplying by pi. So since we know that the radius is six as shown by here, that's 36 times the dh dt value, which is given in the top left right here. So it's two. So that's 36 times two, which is 72 plus two R. So two times six, 12 times the H value, which is not given and the DRDT value, which is also not given. So we leave it as DRDT H. Now let's multiply by, by pi. Right. So when we multiply by pi, it'll be 72 pi, 72 pi plus 12 pi dr over dt h, which is equal to 96 pi. And again, it is equal to 96 pi because the, uh, the problem itself tells us that the volume is increasing at the rate of 96 pi cubic millimeters per second. So it gives us a rate as shown here and where in relation to time it is. So it's per second. So the DVDT value is equal to 96 pi. So now let's subtract 72 pi on both sides. So let's do that. And that gives us 24 pi, which is equal to now 12 pi 
dr dt times h. So from here, our next course of action would be just to divide both sides by 12. So that we would get the dr dt and the h values by themselves by themselves. So that gives us two pi is equal to dr dt h. So since we're trying to find the dr dt value, we just divide both divide both sides by h. Let's do that. Also, we, we could remove the pi. Just realize that. Because we already divided by pi when it was 24 pi divided by 12 pi. So since the pi's cancel, that would just give us 2 over h. So that'd be 2 over h is equal to drdt. So since we have that, let's move on to our surface area formula. The surface area formula of a cylinder is 2 pi rh. So in order for us to solve this, we would have to take the derivative of this 2 pi rh in order to find the surface area in relation to time, because that's what the question wants. The rate of the surface area, at what rate is the surface area increasing in relation to the time, which is in seconds. So that would mean that the derivative, let's take the derivative of the surface area. In relation to time, so the DSA over DT. And we'd set the two pi on the outside over here, because again, two pi is a fixed number. So it is a constant. So we don't need to take the derivative of that right now. So now the main area to focus on right now is just the RH, which is the radius times height. The derivative of that is R DH over DT plus H DR over DT. So let's solve for this. So if you look at R, We've already been given S6 as shown by right here, because it says at this instant, the radius of the tube is six millimeters. So we have to multiply six by the dh dt value, which is two, because the height is increasing at the rate of two millimeters per second. So that'll be six times two, which is 12. And then we got plus h times dr dt. So let's write out the dr dt formula or what dr dt is before solving. So as we found out by taking the derivative of the volume in relation to time, we get the dr dt value to be two over h. So that essentially allows us to just do this. 2 over h. So the h is cancel. So that essentially just gives us 12 plus 2 brackets brackets 2 pi is equal to the derivative of the surface area in relation to time. And the t is the time. It's specified right here. So that would just be 2 pi times 12 plus 4, which is 14 times 2 pi, would just get us 28 pi. And we would set that equal to the derivative of the surface area in relation to time. And that's our final answer. So what does the 28 pi mean? If we scroll up, 
The 28 pi is the answer when we're trying to find what is the rate of the surface area in this question when it's increasing in square millimeters per second. So the rate is here, it's showing the rate. So we got the derivative in relation to time, which is in seconds. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.